Yeah, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are connecting from. To introduce myself, I'm Shashidhar, and I'm part of Citrix Ready technical team. So today, uh, we will talk about how Automai helps robotic automation of applications which run in Citrix environment. And we have Sam Benia, CTO, Automai Corporation, and Amy L. Crawford, EVP Growth Strategies from Liquid Payments, who will walk us through this webinar. Thanks for joining us, Sam and uh, Amy. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And yeah, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar today. And uh, I would like to welcome you all to the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series, where we showcase how uh, Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver uh, valuable products and solutions to the common problems which are uh, faced by our customers today. Thank you, Shashi, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I'm going to try to be brief and, and present what, uh, give you an introduction to what our uh, products are about quickly and, and then hand it over to, to Amy uh, Crawford to, to tell us how, um, uh, how Liquid Payments is using our solutions so you can hear firsthand from uh, a use case from our customers. Uh, so I'll give you an overview of Automa platform and how Automa uh, RPA is is the solution uniquely suited for for Citrix. I'll show you quickly how to create a script in in less than five minutes, a small script and uh, and in in a Citrix environment. Then, like I said before, I'll hand it over to uh, to Liquid Payment to 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 talk about their customers that are using different versions of Citrix, different environments, and uh, how our RPA solution is is helping is helping them achieve that. So uh, let me see here. A quick introduction. We've been, uh, Automate was established in 2000. So we've been around for 21 years. I've been, we've been partners of Citrix for uh, 10 years now. We automate Citrix applications, uh, whether we have an integrated testing solutions with the, with the monitoring and, and I'll cover that uh, quickly in, in uh, next slide. We have flexible licensing and it is a true front-end technology with nothing installed on, on Citrix environment or, uh, or the application that, that is to be automated. So we know that uh, the automation is an integral part of today's business because it saves time and effort, especially on repetitive tasks. It uh, allows your employees to focus on more important tasks and ensures compliance and improve customer experience. And we see a steady growth of, of adoption of, uh, of RPA mm -hmm. in, in the market, business market today. And uh, hopefully today, what we want to achieve is for you to, to know how Automate is uniquely designed for automate, automating processes in Citrix environment. The, the, the myth, Number one about uh, uh, RPA is that it is uh, usually it's a big project and very expensive, but with Automa you can start with one process. Actually, we we recommend to start with sl small, and and get a hang of it and see how how it works and and learn as you're automating your processes and monitoring the ROI, uh, and that's how our customers have successful. Uh, projects and implemented uh, the um, RPA. It's also, there's a myth that image-based automation technologies are hard to maintain. The, 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 the scripts, the automations break because the images change or move or all these things. We've been doing this for uh, over 15 years now. And, and uh, we perfected those, the, the, the image, the image and, and OCR solutions and there's no, we have thousands of customers today that are using our automation to, to automate their businesses. So we, like I was saying before, we've been doing this since, uh, well, actually since 2005, we exist since 2000. Our first uh, performance, performance testing solution was launched in 2005. It was actually a robotic testing solution that was designed with Citrix in mind. So that's why we, are, we came up with the, with the robotic solution that, that evolved 
over the years to uh, to now to include RPA solutions as well. And it's all based on the same engine uh, and uh, it's the same engine, which means that with the same script, same automation, you can simulate thousands of users from all your point of presence and uh, generating orders in your system all over the globe. And you can also, uh, with that script, simulate different test cases, uh, like uh, simulating orders under $10, over $100, and it will create automatically test cases for you and run them and make sure that, uh, that your system is ready for production. Once it moves to production, uh, the production environment, you can continuously monitor and make sure that your end users are getting the right response time, the expected response time, and if there are any issues, you can get alerts and actually integrate them with other monitoring systems. And also for RPA, you can uh, you can have read orders from Excel or from emails or from or from other systems, and then enter them into into your uh, your system like. Uh, the system accessible through Citrix, and that's what we're going to see. That's what this webinar is about. So it it is suitable for Citrix because it is it's all from the front end. Our automation is uh, generated the same way the end user interacts with the desktop. It's uh, it doesn't matter what versions of Citrix it is or what what environments of of Citrix it, it would work. You, you don't need to add any plugins. You don't need to, to understand how the, 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 the application works. It's, it's literally how you explain to an end user how to use the application. That's how the robot will, will interact with the, with the application. Uh, like I was saying before, it, it, uh, it, it, it supports multi-factor authentication, storefront login, workspace login workflows, and it doesn't matter any point of access, whether it's uh, um, the workspace app or from WebView or Citrix on the cloud or on-prem. It's the, not only it works with all these, uh, these uh, environments, but it's the same way of, of uh, creating the automation, no matter how the environment is or, or how, uh, how it's installed or how the access it, is to the application. It's, uh, we will see in, in the live demo in creating this, the, the automation is that there's no code necessary whatsoever. It, it's all just uh, recording the, the automation as you go through your application. And that the, the live demo will be, I'll just show you how it's, it's simple to log into Citrix and, and log into a small medical applications that we published on, uh, on our sisters uh, in the lab add a patient and then log out and all this will be in be done in less than than five minutes so that i can hand it to to amy so let me see here i can so here's the the environment that i have to to create the the script in so let's just say uh, citrix rpa webinar of course you give it a, a name webinar and and here it tells you do you want to create uh, access web application or <clears throat> or launch application from the command line or even scripts uh, one step at a time manually it's all the same it just will launch a web, a, a web browser with with the url you gave it and it starts recording for this we're just gonna since i have it already published i'll just start recording and as i'm going through the application it is analyzing continuously analyzing what's happening on the desk on the desktop. Uh, if I can remember here, uh, and and then taking images that it needs to to take to make sure that when it plays back. If that image is not in the right in the same location, you will still find it. If the image is not exactly the same, but it is, it's the same image, but but it changed the the pixel changed a little bit slightly, it will still find it. It can even look for images in black and white. Uh, so here, when when the desktop opens up, we're just going to go through the application, log in, and then go to the patient menu. And, and enter a new patient. And basically what it's doing now, it's, it's doing a combination of 
images taken what it needs to 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 play back successfully combination of images and uh, and ocr so if i just go here sam i'm just going to enter a few uh, and then just put here the date today's date is well, let's say 20 october uh, and then let's say 2000 there it is and that's it so now uh, where is the button to add save and close okay close and then close here and then <clears throat> so now close in login off citrix and that's it let's close here and this is what was created let me expand it a little bit so you see as i was going through through the application it knew that i i clicked on username it knows what it is so if it doesn't find it with just uh, the image it can find it with ocr and then it's clicking to its right and then it's doing the same thing with the password so it doesn't matter where it finds it it, like I said, even if it moved, it will click in the right location. We have the password in clear here. Of course, we can uh, we can encrypt it. Once it's encrypted, you can never decrypt it. And all this data can also come from uh, from different systems or come from variables. And the password actually can be stored with the Microsoft Password Manager. So as you see here, it's it's pretty simple, straightforward. What was created, and it tries to take images with mouse over, without mouse over. And you see here, it's always adding what uh, what those images are, and we have the tolerance in here as well. It's pretty straightforward, but you can add any business logic to your automation, meaning that you can call APIs, you can run PowerShell scripts you can read text on the screen you can read from excel and more importantly you can add any logic like if conditions loop switches and handle any failures that might happen in the script to recover from or just fail and and uh, and be done with it i mean and, and report the failures and we have a very because of our background in testing we have a very uh, reporting advanced reporting uh, capabilities with the rpa if there are any issues if there are any if your automation fails anywhere you get a screenshot of what was on a desktop at the time of the failure and what the robot was trying to do uh, at that time and why it failed so uh, without uh, any uh, further i don't want to take too much i think my time is up my 15 minutes are up and now i'm going to hand it and if you have any questions about this uh, at, at the end in the q a please do ask us and, and I will address them. And if we don't have time, I can always uh, respond to you directly. Thank you. Uh, how, now I, I'll hand it over to you, Amy. Well, thank you. Well, uh, so as, um, as Shashi uh, introduced in the beginning, uh, I am Amy Crawford and I am the uh, EVP of Growth Strategies and Business Development here at Liquid Payments. So that includes uh, some sales and product development before I jump in, I do want to take a moment to say thank you to Sam and the Automate team, uh, as well as to Citrix, you know, as our host for including us today. We definitely appreciate the opportunity to participate in this discussion and showcase our application of RPA and specifically how we're leveraging you know, the Automate tool set. Uh, I am joined on the call today by a few other members, uh, key members of the Liquid team. So our CEO, Shashi Kapoor, is, is on the call, our CTO, Kalyan Ravi, and John Young, uh, who is our technical implementation manager. Uh, John is very close to all the facets of our RPA technology deployment and processes, and you will hear from him a little later in the presentation as well. So uh, as noted here, I will first give an overview of Liquid Payments as a company, which will help to provide some additional context as I begin to describe how we're applying uh, robotics as a critical component of our overall solution. And then from there, John is going to share some further details in terms of how we deploy RPA and specifically in a Citrix environment. And this will feature three different customer use cases. Um, and then finally, we will share what is on the horizon for us in terms of RPA optimization and innovation. 
Okay, so uh, so who is Liquid Payments? Uh, Liquid Payments is a financial technology innovator in the healthcare payment space. Uh, we provide payments processing solutions uh, specifically to the healthcare market, which we broadly define to include medical practices of various sizes and specialties, uh, health systems, dental and orthodontia practices, DSOs, which are dental service organizations, as well as veterinary hospitals. So we're sitting in the patient to provider or the client to provider payments stream, and our technology is integrated with most of the uh, major merchant processors in, in the US today. So as you can see here from this slide, we've been in market a little over five years since 2016. We're 75 employees strong and growing. And you see some sat stats here in terms of, you know, the number of payment transactions that we're processing per month through our platform, as well as our processing volume. So, you know, in summary, we're serving a little over 400 practice locations around the country today, and, and again, growing. One, one thing I did want to highlight here that's very applicable to this discussion is Liquid Payments was named a leading innovator in healthcare payments by Business Insider Intelligence, and it was, in fact, our utilization and application of RPA specifically, which earned us this distinction in our uh, fintech industry in 2019. So to, to further illustrate our solution, uh, what you're looking at here is a high level visual depiction of the end-to-end -end platform. And I'm just gonna walk through each of these components briefly so we can better correlate and connect the dots in terms of our application of RPA. So the first two aspects of the solution shown here are representative of our core payments processing functionality. So starting all the way to the left of your screen, uh, you see our in-office payment experience. So uh, in the office, we're deploying our application on what we call smart payment terminals. So these are Wi-Fi, wireless, Android app-based terminals they do not require any third-party software to drive them. And uh, we chose these devices for a few reasons, not just because it's a nice modern, you know, mobile intake process for our healthcare practices, but also for two other important reasons which support other features of our solution. The first is what we call tokenization. That just means that when a patient or a client comes in to make a payment in the office, we're able to capture and store the encrypted version of the payment card at that time for future use. But even more applicable to this discussion, we're able to control the data that we consume with each payment, which helps to support the RPA logic. And I'm gonna talk about that further as we move forward. Um, in the middle uh, box here, middle of the screen, uh, you see what is representative of our e-commerce transaction types or card not present. So this functionality includes uh, the ability for our uh, provider and our practices to do things like, you know, auto charge balances owed to a card that has been previously captured on file, set up an automatic recurring payment plan or a subscription plan, for example, uh, all the contactless payment options, so text to pay, email to pay. We also have uh, summary statements that are actionable, so patients, clients can receive text or email with embedded links that they can click on and make payments, you know, right from their mobile device. We also host online payments pages that are connected to our customers' websites. And uh, additionally, we have a very robust messaging platform, uh, text and email, within the solution, which helps facilitate improved communication with patients and clients all around the payments. And then of course, coming to the third, you know, leg of the stool, if you will, um, all the way to the right is our robotics processing automation. So the way that we apply RPA in our solution is anytime payments are processed anywhere on the liquid platform, whether in the office, through one of the devices that, that are shown here, or through any of the card not present transactions, our bot, our, our robotics uh, is running in the background and posting those payments 
into the underlying practice management system or EMR, EHR, directly into that patient or, or client ledger. And, and how do we do this? Well, the, the cool part about how we've structured our solution and the way we leverage the payment terminals and uh, our card not present uh, features is that we're able to push and capture configurable parameters necessary, again, to support that RPA logic and, and, and that workflow. So essentially, this enables us to be agnostic to the underlying practice management systems that our customers are using, you know, provide a superior payment solution, have this financial data auto-posted into their systems, and eliminate the need for manual entry without any dependencies on the underlying system. So with that backdrop of the liquid solution, you can begin to see how our application of RPA and working with the automate tool set is absolutely mission critical to our customers. So this is definitely not, you know, a back office process that's invisible or, you know, uh, a data analysis or something that's being done retrospectively. It is very much a forward facing, you know, highly visible time sensitive type of application of RPA which has an impact on our front end users as well as their downstream customers, which in this case is patients and clients, you know, of those uh, healthcare or veterinary practices. So for this reason, we have done a lot of work in-house along with Automate to optimize this technology and this aspect of, of our solution. Uh, and Many of you on the call, you may be aware there are literally hundreds and thousands of practice management systems and you know EMR, uh, EMR, DHRs out there, and there are those that are more prevalent, you know, in certain specialties that we encounter more often. However, throughout our client base, we have implemented RPA with a host of different systems, and then even among practices who use the same practice management system workflows can vary. So for example, you may have two dental practices and they both use um, a particular dental application, perhaps it's Dentrix or it's Eaglesoft, but their workflow is different or they have uh, more uh, dentists that work out of the office and they want payments posted to a particular provider or coded in a specific way. Is it a copay? Is it a deductible? So these are just examples of workflows or uh, processes that can vary uh, amongst practices even when using the same practice management system. So as mentioned on the previous slide, the fact that we can set up and push uh, configurable parameters to accommodate these types of variances in logic and support the RPA processes enables us to handle a more complex you know, workflow. <clears throat> Additionally, these practice management systems themselves may be deployed differently. So while we come across some web-based systems, particularly in the healthcare market, we still see primarily you know, Windows uh, desktop server-based applications. And many of those practices you know, have a, uh, a Citrix environment, uh, and Citrix is part of their IP, uh, IT excuse me, infrastructure. So we've had to work through deploying our automation tools, uh, not only with different systems and workflows, some more complex than others, but also in a, in a way which accommodates you know, uh, these varying IT environments. And Sam had alluded to that you know, as well in his, um, in his uh, opening uh, remarks. So what you're looking at here is a sampling of the server-based uh, implementations that we have today. And uh, of course, we know that RPA is you know, universally applicable. And this, of course, is not an exhaustive uh, list of systems, but this is just a sampling. Um, you know, this really is a distinct competitive advantage uh, you know, in terms of our solution. And you know, this is an asset that, uh, again, we can deploy to work with any underlying uh, uh, companion system. 
Now, in our case, we have implemented a strategy where we've stratified systems into two tiers. So tier one would include systems that we encounter very often. They're, they're just um, more widely used in the market. And we've seen different flavors of, of that system in terms of different implementations. So we feel that, you know, we've been able to create basically a super bot, right, with all the iterations uh, that we've gone through in, in workflow. And uh, so that's our tier one systems. So when we acquire a, a, a customer with a tier one system, it really becomes an expedited implementation, more about validation and deployment uh, of our of our tool set. Uh, you know, again, the the, the automate tool set. Uh, the tier two systems are those systems that perhaps uh, we've never seen before, or we encounter more infrequently. And then in those cases, we would basically apply our uh, standard RPA implementation and development process. So, you know, one of the things that's important to recognize here is, you know, since this is universally applicable, as we go to market and we acquire customers using different systems, as it says here, our repertoire, our portfolio, if you will, will just continue, you know, to, to expand. <clears throat> So when we do encounter those tier two systems, uh, we have a very um, prescribed, you know, if you will, implementation process when we're implementing RPA. And there are um, really three high level steps, you know, that we uh, go through. And one is to establish the connectivity uh, to the practice management system, right? And and first, before accessing the practice management system, we often have to, you know, get to the server or, you know, wherever the application resides. So that's the first step. Then we do confirm the, pay, the uh, payment posting protocols, uh, you know, with our customers. So that's that requirements gathering. And we have a specific list of questions that we, we go through. And then we complete the development uh, of the automation, we validate it and we deploy that out uh, to, to the customer and essentially uh, take them live you know, with, with RPA. So at this point, what I'd like to do is go ahead and turn it over to John, who will walk us through uh, you know, more specifically how we establish connectivity and, and again, specifically in a Citrix environment. So John, take it away. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Amy, for the overview of the Liquid Payments platform and reviewing the features and functions that uh, does make the Liquid system so unique in our industry space. Um, so next, yes, I'd like to discuss how we actually achieve connectivity into the practice management system used by some of our clients that do operate in the Citrix environment. We'll typically uh, connect into a user machine or dedicated workstation at the client's location using a VPN client. Um, this client, we can supply it because uh, we find that many practices don't actually have a, a, v, a standalone VPN appliance um, that we can use. So in that case, we, we're more than happy to uh, supply the client. The user machine or dedicated workstation can be a virtual or real station running Windows 10. And in many practices, they do have a virtualized IT environment and will, for example, you know, simply spin up a virtual workstation in VMware or Hyper-V. This station also actually hosts the installation of the robot, which are made up of the Automai automation application and tool set. For Citrix implementations, this station also hosts the Citrix Workspace app, which we'll, we will review in a couple of real life use cases next. Essentially, the connectivity that we require are very similar to what a remote employee would need to log in and use the practice management system. Uh, next slide, Amy. Hello? Yeah, hey, John. I am uh, trying to switch slides here. There you go, just, there you go. Sorry, it took a couple clicks. <laughs> okay, sorry, yeah, perfect, thank you. Um, so here we have one of our featured clients, um, McElroy Orthodontics, and at their practice, they are using CareStream OrthoTrack uh, system, which is running in a Citrix environment. 
So for this particular RPA implementation, the practice uh, does have a dedicated workstation that we use to host the Citrix workstation, workspace app, excuse me, the Automy RPA tools, and the VPN connection that we use to remote into that station. So for example, on the station, the liquid Automy robot would start the OrthoTrack ortho system just like an employee would, except we're using automated mouse movements and image recognition to click on the OrthoTrack app in the Citrix environment to start the loading and launch sequence of the application. Once the OrthoTrack app finishes loading, the robot would then log into the application using credentials set up by the practice manager. After the robot is logged in, it continues to navigate within the app and again using image recognition and OCR and mouse keyboard control to post the credit card payment details as needed in real, real time, just like a human would. A little later in the webinar, we'll have a short video showing these processes from start to finish. In our next uh, featured client, um, Ear, Nose and Throat Center, their Greenway Health System, which is uh, their practice management system, is also hosted in a Citrix environment. We do use an, a dedicated workstation at the practice, again, as a home, uh, you can think of it as a home for the Automy robot the Citrix uh, app and the VPN connection. And although this practice management system is different, the flexibility of the Automy RPA allows us to accommodate these variations. We just program the robot to look for different screen elements and use different UI navigation, just like a real person who is trained in both systems. Uh, our last featured uh, client, uh, Amy, uh, thank you, is Devlin Orthodontics. And similar to McElroy Ortho, they're also running OrthoTrack in a Citrix environment. And as you guessed it, we're using a station to host the uh, Citrix workspace app and Automy robot. And very similar at Devlin, the robot is launching the OrthoTrack system with the Citrix workspace app and then logging into the system with user credentials and also navigating within the app using image recognition and keyboard mouse control. One difference from OrthoTrack that I wanted to mention is that at this practice, they happen to have two different office locations. However, because both locations share the same common patient database in OrthoTrack in the Citrix environment, we really only have to deploy one Automy robot and use one Citrix connection for this implementation. So one of their offices you know, has the dedicated workstation that uh, we connect into, although the robot works for both locations. So essentially using Automy has allowed us this strategic flexibility to accommodate a wide variety of client IT infrastructures, including Citrix, and successfully use RPA with an equally wide range of practice management systems. We are IT and health management system agnostic. Great, thank you so much, John. That was super informative and uh, way more technical <laughs> that, uh, that, than I could do. And I know that this audience appreciates that. So thanks so much. Sure, sure. Uh, Yeah, so, so you know, again, uh, I think for the audience, you know, to, to summarize, we are um, processing various types of payments, and essentially those payments are running through our uh, RPA processes, uh, uh, you know, in the Automate, you know, leveraging Automate tool sets, and again, posting that financial data back into the practices uh, management systems used by our customers. Uh, we do have a short video that um, I'm going to play here and talk through and uh, go ahead and hit play. So this is essentially uh, one of our bots that is logging in to a practice management system. In this case, it is Greenway Health and specifically uh, Entergy. And as you can see, the bot is going through this init, uh, initial launch, right, the, of the Citrix uh, workspace. 
And, and then once in the Citrix workspace, we are launching uh, Intergy as the app. And now the bot is essentially going to log in uh, to the practice management system and, and to, to, to post a payment. So one of the things that you'll, you'll see here is this is actually the uh, ear, nose, and throat center that was one of the customers that John featured. And uh, uh, our bot is essentially going to you know, log in and, and post a payment here. Now, we have actually slowed this part of the video down just a hair because when this is happening in real time, it's very quick. But you can see the bot is going in looking up the patient for whom the payment was taken by an account number that was uh, associated with the payment, locating the patient so that the bot can go into that specific ledger and post uh, the payment. So in this case, the payment you'll see here in a moment was $50 that was uh, processed through our platform and uh, the bot here now will post that $50 payment. Uh, additionally, what you'll see as the bot works through is we're able to come down and select, for example, the card type, as well as drop in the authorization code that was received back when the credit card was processed and ultimately approved. So, you know, this is the bot at work, you know, real life case scenario, boom, this payment is posted. Very cool here, this, this patient had a credit on their account of $20, so the system had a prompt, hey, do you want to apply the remaining balance, you know, as an unapplied credit? And our bot said yes, and that was, of course, based on requirements gathering on the front end with our customer. So now the bot is just simply going back in to validate the payment was, was posted. So hopefully that really brings it, you know, full circle uh, to to show everyone, you know, a, a bot in action, right? So this is a, a liquid implementation of the bot leveraging automate uh, tools uh, in practice. Okay. So as as we wrap up the liquid portion of the presentation. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly about, you know, what are we looking at in terms of, you know, what's on the horizon for for liquid payments? Uh, you know, we we are an innovator in this space. This is a critical, you know, component to our overall solution. And um, so I wanted to talk about three primary areas that we are uh, working on now. One is uh, relative to, auto, uh, to monitoring tools. So as Sam mentioned in the beginning, there are uh, monitoring tools that are in place. And what we've done is leverage those tools and done some further development so that we can have really a, a, a real-time uh, view, a dashboard, if you will, into the performance of all our bots. And as we've talked about, since our uh, bots and the way we're applying RPA is so mission critical, we want our internal teams to have you know great tools to be alerted if the bot encounters you know any issues or there's any disruption so that we can get out in front of it be proactive and react to it before it has any impact on our customers so we we have monitoring tools and we're very focused on continuing to develop and optimize those tools uh, and develop additional dashboards and so forth additionally sequencing so this is really interesting. Um, by sequencing, what we mean is we've recently implemented some conditional time elements uh, to prioritize the payment posting for the bot. So as a real life case scenario, we have a pediatric dental group up in the Northeast. And in addition to patients coming in and making payments in the office or online, they have a number of patients on automatic payment plans, as do many dental and orthodontia providers. And many of these practices, when they have uh, folks on auto payment, these payments hit at the same day every month, right? So, so in this case, it's the 15th. So when the auto payments are processed, let's say on the 15th, and the 15th falls on a weekday, a regular office day, like it did this month on a Friday, 
you have hundreds of auto payments being processed and the bot is posting those payments. However, there are also patients in the office making a co-payment on a device or coming in perhaps to make a one-time payment or paying online. So how does the bot know what to prioritize? So we've developed a, uh, a way to identify for the bot, hey, if you're posting a, re a recurring payment or an auto payment on a given day and another payment type comes in that is an in-person payment or a different payment type, that's a priority. So stop posting your auto payment and move to post the, uh, the other payment type first. And the reason for that is if you have a, a patient who's you know, standing in the office and making a payment, they may be waiting on perhaps a printout of their ledger from the practice management system and they want the last payment made to be reflected in that statement, for example. So that would take priority, again, over um, the processing of, of auto payments. So this is where, you know, again, we have a bot running uh, in a particular implementation for a particular practice and there's different payment types coming in and we are adding some sequencing logic to the posting of those payments. And last but not least is parallel processing. So this is really exciting uh, and something we're working on right now and we'll be implementing soon. Uh, parallel processing, what, what we mean by this is today, the trigger for our bot to kick off its, its job, right, and post that payment is an approval of a payment transaction. However, what we are moving towards is actually having the bot uh, trigger when the user starts to take the payment. So instead of making this a linear process where you know, the user takes a credit card payment, it goes through the merchant processing, it gets approved, the bot picks it up and now goes in and posts it into the practice management system, we want the bot to be alerted uh, at the point and to say, hey, uh, I detect a user is about to take a payment for patient, you know, one, two, three, four. Uh, I as the bot, I'm gonna go ahead and log into the practice management system and make sure I'm already in that patient ledger so that when that approval comes through, all I have to do is drop in that payment. And what this does is it brings additional speed to the payment posting process. So we, um, we're really excited about this. I mean, today uh, our real-time posting uh, you know, happens in seconds as opposed to minutes anyway. However, this parallel processing methodology will really speed this up even faster, which in our market, particularly for dental and veterinary practices, is really critical and, and really important you know, to, to them. So, you know, in summary, uh, in before here, I turn it back over, you know, to, to Sam and the folks at, folks at Citrix, uh, you know, Liquid RPA technology, you know, allows healthcare practices the freedom to implement a superior payment solution without compromising on integration. And uh, these assets, uh, you know, can be applied to automate other processes uh, in the payment stream. Uh, so this inherent flexibility, you know, in our tool set, and again, working with Automate, uh, really uh, allows us to adapt to varying workflows, helps our customers, you know, optimize their human resources and increase productivity, minimize errors, uh, and uh, take take costs out. So, um, so with that, uh, thank you so much, and I'll uh, turn it back over to to Sam and or or Shashi. I'm, I'm not sure who's taking over from this point. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Thanks for. Uh running through the slides, talking to all these points. It was really wonderful. And thanks, John and uh, Sam as well for the demo and the uh, all the discussions of what we had about the Automay RPA. It was really wonderful. I hope our audience also liked it. So let's move to Q&A session now. Uh, we have quite a good number of questions. Let's try to accommodate as much as we can in the uh, in the time that we have got now. So the first question goes to I think Sam. It would it 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 will be for you. Uh, how does the licensing work for automation? Um, yeah, licensing is pretty like we said before. It's pretty flexible, meaning that you can start with one robot, and uh, we offer uh, multi-year licenses or or a yearly yearly term license. So it, it's really 
pretty flexible at, as far as licensing uh, is concerned. Oh, and we do good. also offer a free proof of concept so that you can uh, you can install it in your environment. We can help you uh, install and create your first processes and, and see for yourself how it works in your environment. Okay, great. So does this work with web applications as well? Yes, it works with web applications the same way. The same way it works with uh, with Citrix. It's all from the front end. It's all visual. It's what the the bot sees. That's how that's how it works. The same way of creating automation, whether it's client server, web application, thin client, it, it all works the same. Okay, so I think Sam, we have a follow up question on the same thing. So. What about pricing? It is is it based on company size or machines using the during those tests? So no, no, it's it's only based on on the robot. So, a robot is is the <coughs> sorry the piece of software is going to be installed on a, a dedicated PC or or server, and you can run as many automations as you want on that server. Of course, they cannot run in parallel. But it's uh, it, it doesn't matter on the company size or or the uh, or the number of automations. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I think let's switch to a little bit on the technical front. Okay. So the next question is: Can you run multiple robots to the same ERP application if you have a volume of transactions to process? Absolutely. Yes. And we do have customers that are doing that at the, the, right now. Where, yeah, the the all robots are, are connecting the same application at the same time, but they're doing different transactions, or uh, yeah, they're doing different transactions, and it works pretty fine. Okay, great. So, continuing to that, so how do you handle passing records to those multiple robots? Well, it's the director. Actually, we didn't during we didn't have much time today. There's a, another portion. Uh, of of the the solution, which is the the director that that manages all the robots, manages the workload, distributes the load on to the robots, and also reports on on the on the the the, exe the processes when they were they were triggered, what are the results if they were successful or if they failed, and you can schedule automations as well. So you can have certain tasks to be triggered at a certain point, certain days, certain dates, and and, and so on. That's a whole uh, other portion of the software, but uh, it, it comes, it's integrated with it. It's just we didn't cover it today because we didn't have time. That's the monitoring that Amy was talking about and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, so we have a few more questions. Let's take the next one. Uh, how does the RPA solution streamline with the testing and monitoring? Well, it, it's the same. So the we have a different type of robots, but you can install them all on the same server. And it, it streamlines because you have the same installation, the same way of creating the automations. And then when the director, depending on what you want to do, if you're going to do performance testing, of course, you, it simulates multiple users on, on the, the same platform, or if you do continuous monitoring or, or functional testing the same way. So you have kind of four solutions all integrated in the, on the same, in the same platform. Okay, great. Yeah, so I think we lost the presentation. So Sam, I have made it the presenter again, so probably if we can just put it back on the slides. Sure, I would do that. Thank you. Amy, you're on mute, I think. Yeah, apologies. Okay. I thought you were going to take take it back from here. No worries, no worries. Yeah, no, we have you can see questions. my desktop. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. I, yeah. I, yeah. The slides are visible. Thanks, Sam. Yes. Yeah, so monitoring of the robots was mentioned to get ahead of issues. How are you monitoring their progress or rate of error? Yeah, so th that's part of the, the what the director does. Actually, when the robot starts an automation, you can see in the director, you can actually monitor it through VNC connection, uh, and you see the robot going through through all the steps of the automation. And also, if you don't want to, you can turn the, if you're not looking at it through VNC, you can see that the automation started, and then at, at what stage it is, it's, it's uh, what, what it's processing. And if there are failures, you can see screenshots of those failures. And actually the whole, 
the whole log uh, visual log of what what's happening what happened throughout the whole uh, automation every single step what was on desktop what was a robot doing and, and so on and okay. and just to add to that right we you know we we have visibility to those and we leverage and use those tools uh you know within our um you know automate a uh, relationship as well so th they're very helpful <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, let's see this one. Yeah. So, what is the hardware requirement to run a bot? Is it like one VM or multiple bots could run on the same VM? Yes, you can. You, you can run multiple bots on the same VM. The uh, it can be a server or a PC. It's just Windows uh, operating system. Uh, obviously, PC will only run one robot. It can because it the robot needs the access to the desktop, but on a server, you can have multiple robots running at the same time. It's, and Sam, I just wanted to chime in again, and, and sure, Shati, please, because yes. we, we work with a customer base, right, that ranges from small, right, one office practices to larger groups, and, you know, the, the tools uh, really, uh, it's a light footprint, I guess is really the point I want to make. So it's not a heavy footprint that is required, you know, to run, to run these bots. Which is critical, you know, in our in our industry and in our implementations as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for adding the to me. Yeah. So considering the time, I think uh, we could conclude this webinar. But before we conclude, uh, do you want to convey anything to our audience, Sam, Amy, John, anyone? Well, first, I want to I want to thank uh, Amy and John and uh, Liquid Web for helping us with this uh, and, and and telling us about their experience. I think uh, even as we learned we learned a lot today, uh, we are here to to help to assist anyone uh, with with their automation. Uh, and like I said before, it doesn't have to be a big project. We have our methodology. We can start with one automation at a time. You can decide what uh, what works for you, and and our engineers will will help you through the process. Yeah, and I guess just to you know, I just want to echo Sam's comments. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Uh, and again, we're excited to be a part of it. So thank you, Sam and Automy and Shashi and the Citrix team. Uh, and if anyone you know would like any more information about Liquid, you you know how to find us. <laughs> So, thank you. Yeah, definitely, Amy. Thanks, thanks, Amy, and thanks, Sam.